Areas to monitor in the Indian Ocean on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for March 26. Around the world right now, we are still waiting for our 12th named storm of the year so far, and if you think that's quiet, it has been the quietest start in terms of those numbers since 2017, when we were only at 9 by this point. Of course, this year, we've certainly had quality over quantity, certainly in the case of already earlier on. 67 days though until the Atlantic hurricane season, there's a gap in the imagery right now but uh, be rest assured there's not too much going on behind it apart from that big extra tropical system that was that big tornado outbreak yesterday across the eastern United States uh, moving through. In the southern hemisphere though, this is where the tropical activity is at, there's two 10% areas now in the southeastern Indian Ocean towards the coast of Indonesia and Australia and you can see both of them there. The eastern one is really on borrowed time, about to run out of time actually. The one to the west is the one that should become the dominant system and could go on to develop into a significant tropical cyclone next week. On the left hand side as we move further to the southwest Indian Ocean we've still got that other area of interest that we had marked a while ago. It is quite visible on satellite imagery at the moment but it too doesn't have very much time at all and it will probably be out of here in the next 24 to 48 hours and without developing. So the tropics looking fairly quiet at this point with just these three low chances in the next five days. Satellite imagery looks like this and you can see a few areas of enhanced rainfall amounts mainly across Africa and over parts of South America uh, but elsewhere things are looking fairly quiet on the whole in terms of precipitation not too much going on from those tropical signatures and here is the wide shot looking at the southwest Indian Ocean and the whole western region to be honest and you can see there some rotation certainly convection blowing up to the east of Madagascar from that system that has a 10% chance uh, quite a broad feature but not much going on with it. This is the one further east not far from Australia the eastern system out of those three and you can see there that it also is really struggling we don't have a floater up for the middle system yet because it's really just formed so we are just looking at this one and really there's not much left of it no rotation really uh, just a little bit of convection particularly to the western side that is also struggling as we go through the course of this morning. Also, we're still looking at Invest 95P. This is the one near New Caledonia, which we've now scrubbed from our charts as well. And you can see why there's really nothing going on with this system either. A little bit of a rotation there, low level center possibly, uh, but it's extremely elongated. And on the eastern side, lots of convection blowing up, but it is massively stacked wrongly. It's really just all over the place. Sea surface temperatures then look like this, really warm now in the eastern Pacific in the uh, immediate vicinity off the coast of Mexico. Looking towards the Atlantic, it's also looking okay in the Caribbean Sea, 26 degrees plus, and it's just starting to expand just a little bit beyond the Greater Antilles, as you'd expect at this time of year. The Indian Ocean looks like this on the northern side. Very warm sea surface temperatures in the deep tropics. Further north, still a bit of work to do in the Bay of Bengal. Southwest Indian Ocean, those temperatures starting to fall away a little bit in the uh, lower extremities there of Madagascar and off South Africa. Uh, those temperatures just going off the boil now from their peak earlier on. Temperature still okay in the Mozambique Channel, but not quite as warm. And off the coast of Australia, particularly Western Australia, look at that extremely warm 32 degrees Celsius in quite a large pool there off Western Australia. So those two systems could have a real chance uh, as time progresses. And into the South Pacific, also good conditions in the deep tropics north of Fiji and around Fiji as well. Their temperatures of 28 to 30 degrees Celsius. Western Pacific also looking very very good in the Philippine Sea particularly with those temperatures 
starting to increase and 26 not far from the coast of Taiwan now. It is above average in the Western Pacific at the moment, as it is the case in quite a few other locations now. La Nina effect is pretty much gone. We are in a neutral now, it must be said, and it, we are probably hurtling towards an El Nino later on in the year. As you can already see there, the Eastern Pacific equatorial region starting to get quite a bit of an area above average. Oceanic heat content looks like this right now in the South Pacific Ocean and you can see there still that large line of red zone there Coral Sea getting in on a little bit of that as well turquoise and above is decent enough and this is the view in the uh, northern Pacific side the western Pacific there in the Philippine Sea once again really starting to ramp up there in that zone and that's been the case for about three or four weeks now Tonight's short range computer models look at the Australian region, the area that we've already been looking at. And you can see here what happens out of those two systems. Well, it's the western one that really starts to get going around about the 29th of March there. Uh, swirling around and becoming quite larger um, uh, does not doesn't get particularly huge uh, but does ramp up in intensity towards the end of that five-day period there getting close to category one hurricane equivalent status towards the end of that loop and looking at the general region as a whole for precipitation over the next seven days you can see how that develops as well and a lot of it staying of course out at sea but you will notice regardless of tropical cyclone development it will be a very wet phase coming into next week for Indonesia towards the end of this coming week indeed uh, with a potential for maybe another system possibly forming in that vicinity there and the western part of Australia getting a little bit of rainfall up to around five or six inches inland actually in western Australia that's uh, over 125 millimeters and look at some of those areas offshore and over Indonesia there on Java and the islands east of there uh, the amount of rainfall could be approaching 10 inches from tropical disturbances that may go on to develop into tropical cyclones later on so 10 inches possibly there 250 millimeters could be a big issue locally for Indonesia in the longer range what happens to the first system then it uh, starts to move southwards a general recurvature going on but it doesn't move very quickly and look at that two systems forming out of the blue there over the eastern part of the Indonesian islands and both of them becoming substantial tropical cyclones uh, much different take as to what we saw in yesterday's tropical weather bulletin which called for an enormous uh, category 4 or 5 cyclone for the western part of Australia this too could happen though a three-pronged attack there off the north coast you can scan the barcode to take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items, hoodies, towels and pillows and all the other kinds of stuff that we have, quite a big range, as well as our still waiting for Hone t-shirt. Uh, we certainly appreciate it if you can help us out by supporting the channel in that way or in any other way that we have available. Well, in the silly range then, what happens to these systems? Well, the two systems on the western side, they stay out to sea on this particular run. The second one getting quite large there and the re-strengthening later on. And the eastern one splits the scene quite quickly there, grazing the northern top end of Australia there. In fact, it does stay at sea. Uh, doesn't uh, pile through Darwin. It stays to the north there and continues eastwards. And dies off over the Gulf of Carpentaria possibly without making a landfall at all so that's essentially a good case scenario there with those three systems at least from an Australian perspective you can talk about all of that on our discord server discord.gg slash force 13 for tropical weather and general weather chat around the world with over 3,000 members in our server well, on this day, on March 26th, 1991, we had two significant tropical cyclones as well. We had a Cyclone Fatima, which was peaking as a 130 mile per hour Category 4. And behind it, we had Cyclone Errol, which was going to peak at around 120 mile an hour winds today. Also take note of a very interesting feature across Western Europe there. Massive band of cloudiness and convection there spewing out all across uh, into the eastern Russian area there as well. Fascinating on this day in 1991. 
back to this year and the upcoming Northern Hemisphere seasons. We'll start with Arlene in the Atlantic, Adrian in the Eastern Pacific and Hone in the Central Pacific still. We are unclassified right now with no systems expected to form as we've seen 11 storms so far this year. Sandvu next in the Western Pacific and it's Mocha in the North Indian Ocean next up on their lists. And in the Southern Hemisphere of course we still have the potential for more tropical cyclones all in all those basins. Herman in the Australian region, Fabienne in the Southwest Indian Ocean and Lola in the South Pacific. I'm away for the next week. I'll be back next Sunday. Hopefully some of my team will fill in on our tropical weather bulletins. Until then, stay tuned on the channel. <laughs>